Welcome to The Biggest Deal I Ever Sold. Today I speak with Joyce Ray about her record-breaking $195 million listing, as well as selling the Sonny and Cher estate and why the commitment to always improving is one of the biggest things you and I can do. The Biggest Deals in Real Estate and the Stories Behind Them, hosted by serial entrepreneur Bill Svoboda. Brought to you by Close Simple, the trusted name in real estate communication, who asks, how well does your title and escrow company communicate with you during the closing process? And now, the biggest deal I ever sold. Joyce Ray, it is a pleasure to have you today on the biggest deal I ever sold. How are you doing today? Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. The name of the show is the biggest deal I ever sold. But before we talk about the biggest deal you've ever sold, and we could pick which one to talk about. I want to start with your first deal. Could you, could you take me back to that deal? Of course I can. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I represented the buyer. And I sold Christina Onassis and Joe Boker's house in the Beverly Hills Post Office, and the sale price was approximately $125,000. One transaction that I think a lot of people would associate you with is the Sunny and Share estate. Can you talk a little about that one? Because that was like your first big deal, right? Well, that was my first big deal. You're right. And I was a, a pretty young realtor at the time. And uh, I sold that property for a million two hundred thousand, which uh, at the time was a record breaking price. I believe the year was 1976. And I represented the buyer in that case. He was a businessman, a carpet manufacturer, and it was so exciting. And we made that deal on the 4th of July, 1976, the country's 200th birthday. Look at that. You celebrate with the fireworks there. <laughs> exactly. So, so talk about that. Talk about that property though, besides just sunny and share, what was special about that property? Can you rep, like, do you have a picture in your head of each property you've sold? Like, The property is quite his special and historic. It, it, uh, it had a wonderful history over the years. And it was on nearly four acres adjoining the Los Angeles Country Club. Uh, gorgeous gardens. And the house itself had beautiful detailing that you seldom see in this area with rosettes carved in the, in the ceiling. And it was an, a spectacular two-story entry. It was a very, very special property then. And today it is on the market uh, with additional land added to it for, I believe the asking price is 115 million. Is there one property though that you think about that you're like, that was just one crazy transaction? I don't know about crazy. I, I had a, in 2010, I sold the most expensive house in the United States. Uh, and of course that was during the recession, if you recall, 2010 was probably uh, the, the worst year for real estate. And I sold a property at that time uh, it was listed for 72 million and I, I sold that. And um, it, that was extremely exciting because nobody was making deals back then. Uh, I resold the property two years ago uh, at, an, at an increased, at a, at a slightly increased price. So once again, I sold a property twice, uh, which is, you know, always an honor when particularly when you haven't represented that particular client to begin with, and they've come back to you to represent them. Okay, so you, you sold it in the economic downturn. How do you go about selling something like that? What does marketing look like in an economic downturn? How did you go about getting that deal done? Because right now we have COVID going on. You know, a lot of people are looking at their businesses, just trying to get through. How did you go about closing the huge deal during that type of economy? Well, I don't think you can pay attention to economic circumstances. I think you have to move forward with a positive attitude and you have to be innovative in your marketing. <clears throat> For instance, today, when it comes to COVID, you, we're all, everyone's online. So, uh, you know, you have to maximize your visibility online, whether it's uh, promoting social media 
uh, and boosting your posts on Instagram, uh, or if it's reaching out to the entire brokerage community and having by appointment only uh, viewings. Uh, but there are many things that you can do no matter what the circumstances are. You have to be looking forward and working every angle. And even the old fashioned way works to some extent. For instance, I send out a private label magazine on lifestyle that only has my listings in it. Now, no other realtor does that, but wow. this goes to the wealthiest people in LA. So I am constantly thinking of what other agents are not doing and trying to step it up. Well, Joyce, I think on that note, I want to transition this. And again, the name of the show is The Biggest Deal I Ever Sold. I want to talk about the biggest deal that you ever sold. What do we list this thing at? And can you give us kind of a picture of what we're going to be talking about here? I'm excited about this. Well, uh, of course, the biggest deal that I did was the biggest deal the biggest residential uh, house sale in the country, and it was last December. Uh, records, however, in our business don't last very long because Jeff Bezos came along and paid a little more for another house. Dang it, Jeff, Bezo Jeff Bezos ruined it for you. Come on. <laughs> but for a while, I have the record. Uh, but that's the case with every record. Inevitably, they're beaten. But... Uh, this property was one of the most beautiful uh, I have ever seen. It, um, it, it belonged to uh, a gentleman. It was in his estate. He passed away. And uh, it was in the center of Bel Air uh, with gorgeous views from downtown to the ocean. Uh, in the actual sale, there were four parcels involved in the sale. Um, amounting to over 11 acres of land, which is remarkable for our neighborhoods. Uh, the private driveway alone was uh, so beautiful and scenic, and the property was completely private, and it was a, an exquisite limestone manor. And it actually had been featured on television as part of the Beverly Hills hillbillies many years before just the exterior facade of the house um, but and so some people may remember it from from that show so many years ago but it was a real classical architecture and epitomized uh, sophistication and and class in my view and uh, it the owner had extensively renovated it when he bought it in the 90s and he had brought the most important interior designer, uh, Henri Samuel from Paris, who was in his 80s at the time, who consulted on designing the interior of this house. So it was extremely authentic and very, very special. And of course it had, guest it had a guest house that was built by Wallace Neff, who of course is a famous architect. And it had a swimming pool, tennis court, gardens to die for and a beautiful koi ponds and a, 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 a gazebo it, it it just it there was nothing this property missed what was your favorite part of that property like if you were going to just spend an afternoon somewhere like where would you have like what caught your attention the most about that well there were so many it was in well the rose gardens talk about roses i mean my little few rose bushes don't count next to, next to what existed there. It was exquisite, exquisite rose bushes. Wow, that it sounds it sounds beautiful. Okay, so talk talk to me about the deal itself. Like, how did you the first time you met the seller? Like, talk to me about the forming that relationship. Like, what was it like that first meeting? Because I assume like we're talking about a very high priced piece of property. Like, how does that conversation go? Well, <clears throat> in order to list that property, there was a very extensive interview process. And um, there were three trustees of the estate, which we, we, we met with and presented our plans to market and sell the property. So it was, it was, it was a very, very nerve wracking process. Let's put it that way. 
And you walk into that room, I mean, do you have your kind of like binder full of ideas or what does a pitch at that level look like? You know, when you're pitching them, what's it like? Well, you bring in, you bring in your, your group. I had a, a wonderful partner on the sale, uh, Alexandra Allen. And we talked about what we were going to do. We, uh, we uh, brought in our marketing and our public relations. In other words, we brought in our whole team that was going to present this property and get them the best possible price. I think an interesting thing to note is, I mean, this was nerve wracking for even you. Like we're talking about a huge dollar amount and your heart's still kind of pounding a little. Going back to, <laughs> okay, your heart, your heart's pounding. So you, you get through that meeting, you walk out of that room, like what happens next? Did they sign the, did they sign with you then? Or is it, okay, we're interviewing some other people or how does that go at that level? I believe they chose, well, the first thing they did was give a group of realtors the tour of the property. They had selected a group of top realtors to give a tour. And out of the people that toured the property, they selected, if I remember correctly, it was either three or four realtors that they were going to ha ask to make a presentation. So just being asked to make the presentation was a big deal. So... Uh, that was the next step. And then, of course, we waited for the results. I can't remember if we went back on a second interview. I don't think we did. Um, I think we then got the call that we had been selected along with uh, uh, another, because uh, they ended up asking three uh, companies to represent the house. So we all wow. three worked together to sell the house. So it was wow. a real team effort. Let's put it that way. Can you put it into words what it felt like just to get the listing? Like, did you leave, did you get that memo or the, le like, what's it like? Is it a phone call or how did they, how it did they was a phone you? call. It was one of the best phone calls I've ever received. <laughs> and, and afterwards, I mean, what do you do after you get that phone call? Is it, I'm going into my office and just heads down or are you running out? You're going to favorite restaurant. Like, what do you do after you get a listing like that? Well, I think I, I I just felt like I could relax for the next 24 hours. <laughs> you can just like chill. You can go walk around your rose garden for a little bit and smell the roses. Okay, so so you, you get the listing. Talk to me about how long did it take to actually close that deal then? What was the timeline on that? It, on was, that? it took several years, it took several, which is not unusual. Uh, uh, many properties have taken as much as six, seven years in this, equivalent price category, dependent on the times, obviously, uh, to sell. Because obviously, the, 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 there's a very narrow market for in this range. I mean, you have a handful of people that are yeah. able to spend this kind of money or willing. I mean, there are people that are able that aren't interested. And so it's, it's you know, it's, we call it lightning in a barrel. You, you you're hoping to get just the right person that has the fit that's going to pay the price. I don't know if this is under NDA or anything, but can you describe the buyer? Who buys that type of property? Uh, no, I did sign an NDA and I really, uh, it, we, it, it was listed at the time of the sale, it was listed at 195 million, but technically I'm not even supposed to disclose the sale price. That's totally fine. I honor NDAs on this show, so I'm not gonna prod any further. <laughs> so, okay, let me ask you this. The day of, like, we, we get the listing, you move on, you do your marketing. Was there anything about the marketing of a property that size that's special, different than other properties you've listed? Is there something that sticks out that you did differently? Or is it just, you just keep going? You just keep going, you keep doing the method? For the most part, they were similar. It was just on a much larger scale. In other words, if you would take out one page um, in a certain uh, publication, we would take out four, uh, th that sort of thing. There were perhaps a few places where we advertised. I think we, we used a, a, a very classy publication in the Mideast, for instance, um, that I recall was quite expensive. But for the most part, it's, it's just, 
a, a larger and more impressive presentation in many of the same places where we advertise our $20 million properties and $30 million properties. Okay, so let's go back to the day you, you're in that room, you're making the strong pitch, your heart's racing, the day of closing, the day that it's gonna, you, you got the deal done. What does it feel like to wake up that morning and just know that by the end of the day, it's done? Like, what's, what does it feel like that day? Walk through that with me. You're walking on air. You're on, a, I mean, you're, you're involved in one of the most significant sales. And, but based on my 45 years, I, I know that someone else is going to come along. I didn't know it was going to be in a few months and Jeff Bezos, but uh, you know, that's just the way it happens in my business. So you have to, you have to go on to the next. You can't, you can't, you know, spend too much time celebrating. Has that been a big part of your career? Always just looking at the next deal, always the next. Like how many potential deals are you really just fostering? Like at any given point, like how many relationships are you just nurturing where you're like, how many deals do you actually have going on at one time? Well, that varies a lot. Uh, this week has been exceedingly busy. I'm either I'm working on three transactions. Um, and usually I don't have three going on at one time, but uh, you, you, of course you're always working on your listings, promoting those, making sure your buyers and, and, and any buyers you're working with, making sure that everything's covered. One of the reasons I formulated a real estate team um, over, gosh, 12, 15 years ago now, uh, was my desire to make sure that everyone was absolutely covered 100%. So I have a partner on nearly every transaction. So I can, if, if I'm busy on something, I know that, the, that there are, in other words, there's another set of eyes here. And uh, that way I can offer stellar service to my clients. That's, I think that's a great takeaway for anybody. I mean, have somebody else with you to help carry that load in life. You can always try to be the hero yourself, but two can help get that thing done. I want to ask you this before we kind of move on, but how do you celebrate something like that? You close the deal. Like, what does the rest of the day look like after? Do you just go home and chill? Is it you're going out to eat? Do you have a splurge purchase? Like, do you buy a new watch or a necklace? Like, what does Joyce Ray do to celebrate closing the biggest deal of 2019? Well, I didn't buy anything special. Uh, it wasn't just the biggest deal of 2019. It was the biggest deal ever at that the time. The biggest deal ever. Um, but I, I don't. I don't know that I did anything. I'm sure that I, uh, you know, I just don't even remember. I know you think that I should be out uh, organizing a party for a million people, but <laughs> I didn't really, I, 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 I was very excited and happy and, and, but I, I didn't, I didn't do anything that I recall as being that special. Let's put it that way. You're already on to the next thing. It's you got you got the next deal, the next person that you're gonna help. What motivates you today? Is there something that drives you? Is it people? Is it the next record? Or what is that thing for you? I think it's I all I like for instance last year obviously we had a great year because of that sale, but I I always want each year to be even better. So I'm always trying to think of ways that will contribute to that goal. So um, I, I, I just, I, I just want to keep improving. I think that's a great analogy. You know, like you're, you're somebody over the course of your career, you're, you've only gone up and yes, you've gotten better over time. Like, yes, you are like fine wine. Joyce Ray, that needs to be on like your business card. Joyce, thank you so much for taking a few minutes with me today to talk about this the people who are watching again you know they're going to grab pieces of this conversation but if you had one thing that you could leave people with anybody in sales jobs in management no matter who's watching this like what's something that everybody could take from your story from all of your experience that you wish they would just grab 
that you could leave with them today? That what's been most important to me throughout my life is helping other people. And I've tried to do that in every area of my life, not only in my business, but also in my charitable endeavors and my political endeavors, making, making things better, making this world a better place. And um, I would say, besides being the best I can be, I've had that goal of, of helping others. And that's a great note to end on. And that's a great challenge for everybody watching. Help others, don't just think about yourself. Joyce, it has been an absolute pleasure and I can't thank you enough for taking a few minutes. I know you've already said this has been a busy week for you with other deals and it just means a lot that we could have these few minutes together. 